Hello, my soccer universe to the Western European uh, review of the weekend. Yeah, I'm shooting this very late, but yeah, I hope things will come down soon. Uh, especially La Liga, but also Liga. I didn't see much of uh, Liga Nosh. I didn't see anything of Liga Liga Nosh. Was of course all in memoriam Maradona. It was not as tear jerking as it was in Naples, which we'll talk about in the. Uh, Serie A video that I'm gonna shoot tomorrow, but the were quite the things, and I also wanna pay a teeny bit tribute by wearing this Atletico Madrid shirt that I've uh, newly. That reminds me a lot about a Boca jersey, just with the yellow going vertically instead of horizontal. So I always say this is Atleti's Boca jersey, in which they actually clinched. The title in 2014, as far as I can remember. Before we go to talk a little bit about the games and what was happening, uh, very briefly some headlines. I mean, the first one is Atletico Madrid, and that's why I'm wearing Atleti, and I'm so happy I have now one, because I can keep that one up there. Uh, Atletico Madrid keeps rolling and gets another uh, big win, and they really are set to take control of the league at this moment. Uh, we have Alaves getting a win at Real Madrid, although Real Madrid probably would um, claim that they should have gotten at least an equalizer. We'll talk about that. Barcelona winning against Osasuna was not as remarkable as was the fact that Messi's tribute to Maradona, which went a lot deeper than uh, one, <laughs> one uh, would look at the first time. The first time it's already great, but the second, I think, uh, you see even more. And then, of course, the big duel between Real Sociedad and Villarreal was uh, two penalties and rather tame affair. In France, PSG dropping points again and no one taking advantage of that. Let's get started in La Liga. Um, Rava did Levante didn't see much. I actually saw some of Elche against Cadiz and have to say, I mean, the goal by Boyer was already nice. But I think for me, the key scene was that just before the halftime, he was sent off for elbowing and didn't do anything. He was just danced as the standing there and the defender, who happened to be a little bit smaller, and yeah, uh, by jump, fell down. <laughs> but there was nothing. And that gave then Cadiz the advantage because Elche was, as far as Fresca, the first of the better team, but then it was Cadiz, they get the equalizer, it ends 1 1. As I said, not much to talk about, but I was more or less waiting for Valencia playing Atletico Madrid, which was a very tactical game where you always had the feeling both teams wanna go for, both teams wanna attack, but the other teams are, neutralized, is, are neutralizing. And so uh, that makes kind of. Uh, <laughs> An interesting game, but also 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 one that um, it looked a little bit stale. It was not the greatest watch. I have to say though that I was very happy to see Atleti play in their red and white jer jerseys, and I think they could even play with the uh, blue pants. Yes, they're a little bit dark maybe this time around, but uh, at least that we got to see because I, I was afraid that Leti will have to play in away jerseys there as well. But yeah, uh, as, as, as I said, I mean, chances were there, but it was nothing that great. And uh, it then was an own goal by Lato. Uh, horrible own, own, own goal. And it goes very in the post in. But Atletico Madrid were the better team, were a little bit more active, but they didn't have, to, you know, it looked a little bit like, like the Lock Moscow game where they just couldn't find the breakthrough in a way. But Valencia was always um, dangerous, although I think towards the end of, of, of the game was all about Atleti moving forward. But a big win for um, Atletico Madrid for the Colchoneros. Then Alaves get a penalty. Yes, I think it was a penalty, but uh, Real Madrid should have gotten a penalty as well because uh, Marcelo was clearly pulled down on the hair. They probably had a second penalty call as well. I hear now that this first penalty well, with the hair, hair pull was not picked up by VAR because VAR didn't have the picture. This was a different company that made those, so not very smart, but yeah, the way it, uh, that's the way it went. Uh, Jose, Lu, Jose Lu in the 4 for night makes him tunnel for Al Alaves, but Real Madrid then, um, you know, made some changes, brought on uh, uh, Vinicius Jr., Isco, Mondi, and Ö Ödegaard to kind of change ev everything around, give a little bit fresh um, 
um, you know, some freshness to the game, but uh, it didn't it help them to get a better performance? It also, um, you have to say, they're still starting with, with, with the old guard and, you know, slowly bringing in the new guys. Big thing also have happened first of the Eden Azar. He just was about to look right. Played two games, is in, out in, in, in injured again, and we have to say that this is not a good was not a smart buy from uh, Real Madrid uh, this, this, this time around. Casemiro in the 86 pulls one back. Uh, then I think Isco hits the crossbar. Could have been a 2-2. I think on another day, Real Madrid gets at least one penalty penalty and the game ends 2-2. They would, would have even won it despite being 2 down. But another win against Alaves. I think Alaves played a draw against Atleti, a draw against Barcelona, and now they win against Real Madrid. Uh, and they still were kind of uh, down on the ball at the bottom of the table. But uh, kind of in interesting, I would say. Barcelona against Osasuna. Uh, it was all about Messi in many ways, although he only scored the last goal. Uh, again, Messi was a little bit more on target there. Uh, and they, of course, had on, on the mid-circle a uh, nice flower thing with uh, Maradona, because he played also for the club. They brought out his jersey and so on. Uh, and Barcelona dominated proceedings uh, as much as they wanted. I mean, f finally, one is, uh, to, uh, one is inclined to say... I honestly have to also say that uh, I think Barcelona will always have these games. It's just against the top teams that they are uh, struggling. The goal by Breathwaite would have almost been chalked off because you can see how Messi wants to go with the hand there. Play hand of God. Didn't. Didn't touch it. And Breathwaite makes the goal. The goal by Griezmann was a really nice shot where you could see that uh, Griezmann is putting all his anger in there. And then his <laughs> uh, celebration. I don't know if this was pointing towards any criticism or it was just him being, you know, I know he makes some, 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 some of those funny uh, celebrations. So I uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Coutinho makes a 3 0. And then the big story um, Messi's fourth uh, goal. Assisted by Trincao, where he runs in front of the box, past two men, and violence, he enters the box, he takes a great shot up into the top right corner. Um, wonderful goal, probably the best of, of all, although I really like the Griezmann shot too. But probably was the, the goal of the, even, uh, of, of the afternoon. He goes then out and takes his shirt off and reveals a new old boys uh, shirt, which we all know is Messi's or original club and a club that he still has uh, some uh, relations to with the number 10 on there. Of course, Maradona's now because Maradona also played against new old boys and makes a gesture like this that Maradona also made on wearing this jersey, but it gets even better. Maradona scored a near identical goal on his debut uh, for New York's Olbers against Ekmelek, I think. Um, near identical. I mean, it's, you can find on on uh, on YouTube if, if, if I remember to edit pro properly, but you know, I will post this now overnight and it will post whenever it posts. I would have to do some reading, but you can find it. Just say uh, Maradona New, New York's Old Boys Messi, Google, Google that, you'll find out. It, but Messi just scored the same goal as Maradona. Then, and now this, this I've verified. And now there are two more stories to that. And this to me now is, I don't know how much is real and how much is conjecture, but, or made up because it would make a too great of a story. But on that day before Maradona, Newell's old boys brought out a six year old to juggle balls in front of the crowd. 93, something like that. Lionel Messi. Furthermore, it's rumored that the jersey that Messi was wearing is the exact same jersey that Maradona scored that goal in. I mean, doesn't it get better? And then he makes a gesture, so scores the same goal. And this is the second time he at least copied Maradona. Uh, I think he had a hand of God as well. Uh, but um, we all remember his goal against Getafe, although I still think Maradona's goal was the better one. But yeah, Bar Barcelona looking for once fine. I cannot complain much. So we can talk about Messi's tribute to Maradona, which I think is overall, I think the big story from a sporting perspective is of course Atletico Madrid pulling away. But I think the biggest story of the weekend to me is Barcelona's tribute to Maradona. 
Um, I actually saw the, the end also of Celta Vigo against Granada, where um, I think Granada took the lead, Celta Vigo to throw really no little could uh, equals very quickly, and it was a rather even game. And then uh, uh, Baitha in the 81st gives uh, Celta, the week, uh, Celta the lead, and then Beltran, after a wonderful uh, Iago Aspas assist, makes it 3-1, and finally, 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 Celta gets a win again, which was sorely needed. After the um, final, final whistle, though, uh, they get a player sent off Jokuzli. Absolutely stupid stuff. And then the late game, yes, I was watching more Napoli Roma, but I, from what I could say, was it a rather tense affair. Two penalties, first one for Gerard Moreno uh, for Villarreal, make it 1 0, Oyar Sabal in the 33rd convert. I think that Real Sociedad was then slightly the better team, had a little bit more of the ball, but I think uh, both teams could live very well with this draw, because both teams want to hopefully move, maybe even Champions League. So picking up the points is probably better than going all out for the win. So yeah, uh, not unexpected, although I really was hoping that this could, I really thought this could be a highly entertaining game, but at the moment it rarely turns out this way. Um, while I'm shooting the game, uh, Betis against Eibar has hasn't started yet, you'll get the result next weekend. And so we have the standings. Yeah, so that's still being on top power with two games more than Atleti and only one point ahead. We know where this is going. Atleti is still the big favorites to win that one. And Notre Real Madrid at the moment is only at 7%. They were about a month ago, they were at 4 or 40%. It, they had such a bad run of games. Uh, I think after, after the class, class they were even the top favorite of over 40%. Now we're on only at 7%. Even Barcelona, picking themselves up now. I mean, they were down in 13th and suddenly they're now in 7th and still have also two games in hand. So uh, never discounted. Real Madrid also having a game in hand. So they probably would move uh, with, with the game in third spot easily. Yeah. So uh, never forget that. It, it is more, it, uh, table over is misleading. I was actually thinking whether I should do the table with percentages uh, instead of points, but you know, we are um, accustomed to look at it in points, but uh, maybe I should do a table with percentages because that might l make it more, much more interesting. Also, make goal difference based or uh, divide by games and have a little bit uh, there. That's maybe something for next season. So yeah, uh, Sevilla also with, with the win uh, moving up. So it gets a little bit more Cadiz falling out of there. Uh, but we still have Real and Villarreal, kind of the surprise teams at the moment. And let's see uh, if Barcelona, if they get the, th um, the six points, which is not a guarantee. But if they get, they will also have 20 points. So they would level with, uh, be level with Real Madrid. Real Madrid has already f lost, like Barcelona, three times this season. So it really seems to be made for Atletico Madrid, who, along with Milan, are the only team that have not lost since the Corona restart. Just, they have lost once. But not in the league, and Milan also have lost once, but not in the league in Europe, both have lost. But other than that, they have not lost yet. So, uh, quite remarkable. On the bottom, since you know I like Celta Vigo and Real Valladolid, uh, those two are now... Um, not bottom anymore, Celta Vigo still uh, in the drop zone. Um, I'm a, a little bit surprised to see Levante down there, but yeah, uh, they also have not been all that great. Uh, the next weekend has another big game with Sevilla against Real Madrid, although I would, that one I would imagine to not have many goals. Uh, Barcelona plays a Cadiz, which could, is a tricky tie, I would think. Um, I actually, Villarreal, Elche, and Deportivo Alaves against Real Sociedad at Derby. Also, not that, that bad, and Atletico Madrid against Valladolid probably should add a few more goals. So, that's what's up in Spain. Then, we go all the way to France, um, where we had a makeup game on uh, Wednesday uh, evening, last against not 1-1. And then on the weekend, I think the big action is all um, already on Saturday, OM. Also, uh, Liga making a nice Maradona tribute at the, at the beginning of every game with all the players lining up like an M. The gold goal, 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 goal was on top there. Um, Marseille, within two minutes, they're up to, uh, by Tauvin. Payet makes the second. Benedetto, Boca guy. 3-0 uh, and uh, Nantes can only pull one back. So rather easy win for Marseille. In the league, they can win. In Europe, they are abject. It has, has, has to be said. I, 
I would hope for them that they beat at least Olympia Coast for once. But then all eyes were on PSG Bordeaux. I mean, Bordeaux, I have to say, when I look at their uh, squad, they don't have such a bad squad. Uh, it, should, it should be all the way down there. Uh, and they even take a lead through, uh, through the Pombele uh, own goal, I think on his debut for PSG. But Neymar with a penalty, Moise Ken turned around. But the game was ra rather open. Bordeaux was really uh, take, take, taking it to PSG at times. However, um, there was also Mbappé having a great chance where the goalkeeper just got up. But um, in the first 20 minutes of the second half, it was all Bordeaux. And they get uh, through Adli the well-deserved equalizer. And yeah, with some luck, Bordeaux could have probably won, won it, but that would have been maybe too much. But PSG really, really not looking good at, at the moment. Lyon can move close with a 3 0 over uh, Start de Reims. Um, I was, um, you know, Brest keeps winning 2 0 over uh, Metz. Monaco also backs up the win over PSG with a win over uh, Nîmes. Nice. It is not that great this season. And then Lille only won one at Saint Etienne, who finally don't lose anymore. Also has, has to be said. So in the standings now, after all these games, we have that PSG barely hangs on the top. So if Lille would have won, they would have gone top. No, they didn't. Or maybe they, 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 they could have drawn level. But for now, we have PSG at almost the lowest point with 81% just winning the championship. It's a lot more open, especially with Lyon and Lille. A little bit Monaco getting in there and there as well, which are also the top favorites to make it into the Champions League uh, this season. Then a little bit change up in the mi in midfield. Ligue 1, uh, together with La Liga, is actually uh, based on this balance measure. They are currently also the two most balanced league, although Ligue 1 gets a little bit bent out of shape already especially the bot top and bottom but um those two leagues are rather rather even uh in the next round let's look uh nim against marseille local derby in the south uh, montpellier psg also interesting because montpellier he uh, was at least a champion long time time ago but other than that i don't really see now the big standout tie in there so yeah uh maybe there will be a standout game for sure. I mean, uh, France can always surprise a little bit. In Portugal, uh, at the time, I'm Tatum, Benfica and Maritimo are approaching halftime, but I actually don't know where they're going at the moment. Uh, we have Porto winning at Santa Clara Sporting, beating Morarense, and we've also Braga beating Farense, which were all kind of easy games. Also, uh, Guimarães beating Tondela. It was all top, top teams against mid table uh, teams or bottom teams. Morarense is a more mid table team. So, in the table, Benfica hasn't played yet, so they are currently in fourth with a win. They will go. Um, back uh, in the tie with Braga and then it goes probably down to goal difference which Benfica would win. No, uh, doesn't Braga hold the head to head now? I think Braga holds the head to head. So that would take a uh, press, uh, would go there. Sporting uh, were last week still uh, kind of uh, the favorite, but uh, all their rating took a little bit down. It's very much a level race. Porto being a slightly favorite, but we have to see. Uh, it's wide open and it's just look at how Sporting has only one draw against Porto and otherwise all only wins and they lost only once this season against Lusk. So also interesting. In the next round, uh, we have, no, no, that we have a makeup game uh, from round seven, Morange and Passos de Ferreira. Portugal uh, lagging a little bit behind, but they also have the cup competition going. And then uh, if I look just at the big of uh, family cow sporting, which would have been probably more interesting last time, Portugal plays against Tondela uh, and Benfica plays on Sunday and Passos. So uh, nothing really uh, exciting yet. We are still waiting for top clash there, Belenenses against Braga, maybe also. So yeah. That was it from Western Europe. Uh, let me know what you thought about anything that I talked about, about the three leagues, how you saw the games. Maybe you saw something differently. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a great day.